Hi, Art Seekers. We're here with Jason Ostro, someone that I've loved and known for years, and I'm so excited to finally do this. Me too. Thank so, you for having me. Of course. How did you get involved in making art in the first place? Oh, man. Um, I started with art watching my mom create art uh, at a very, very young age. And um, in watching her basically do everything that she did, uh, colors became more fascinating. And, um, space and shapes and um, I guess psychedelic drippings of colors just permeated into me and it was like one of those things that I was like I like art I can deal with this. So when you first started to make your own art it was initially inspired by hers but did you automatically go to this abstract style? You know I started with doodling um, in schools and you know I think that's pretty much what almost every artist can say is that they were uh, hanging out in school and they weren't listening but they were drawing or they were listening and the next thing they know is they had this page of doodles that just looked like something and then they wanted to keep on doing something with it. When I moved to Los Angeles in 98 and uh, all my friends had left over the holidays and uh, I was basically left alone in town and I was thinking shit what am I going to do and I decided I was going to get a bunch of canvases from the Goodwill and buy a bunch of paint and just try to take my doodles to the next level. And uh, I started making this one painting and a friend saw it about halfway through and, and was like, I want to buy that. And I was like, um, really? And the next thing they know, they offered me a price. I said, sure, I could have gave it to them. Then ended up selling a couple more paintings as the time went by and then making some more for myself. And uh, the rest was history. I kind of was like a part-time artist at the time. What was that initial painting of? It was uh, one of my black and white designs. It was very simple. It's shapes with um, lines through all the black and white and um, nothing kind of like fits together in one way. It all kind of like flows. And it was basically where I came up with evolution of flow. Because when I looked at these pieces, I basically um, just saw a million things. And from the seeing a million things, I could just imagine a million things. And anytime anybody else looked at the pieces, they, they would say, I see this, and then I would see that. Or, yeah. So how does flow manifest in the current work that you're doing now? It still is uh, very, very dominant. Um, I've kind of taken my pieces to flow of love, in a sense, um, because in most of my pieces that I do now, you'll find one or two or three hearts in it and a bunch of arrows. And what those do is it's directing your eyes to either chase the love or lead away from it. And subconsciously, it, it all depends on when I was doing the piece. Like if I was doing, um, if I was painting something and one arrow goes directly away from the heart and because I'm subconsciously doing it, um, maybe I was not feeling the love as much there. And so when I look at the painting later on and I'm chasing those arrows and chasing the flow of the piece, I always do end up getting back to the love, but it's like, sometimes it's difficult. So it's kind of like a roadmap for your emotional journey. A little bit. I would say so, yeah. The whole project with spray paint, though, kind of came to me through uh, wanting to try something new through a heartbreak. You know, I wanted to get my mind off of something and picked up a can and started spraying. And the next thing I know is it's like, wow, this looks really cool. I want to do more of this. And here I am doing more and more and more, which is really nice. I've now painted in multiple places all across the country. And it's, it's really fun. So even when you don't have explicit words that say love in your canvas, the love is always the intention. Always. Yeah, always. Um, it doesn't have to be a love of like, you know, person to person in a romantic sense, but it just has to be a love of the uh, emanation of happiness and caring for one another and like really just seeing something that isn't normal, but isn't something that's going to go, oh God, I don't... It's nothing I want to see. It's I, I want to pull out happiness out of people. I want to see a little kid who's five years old walking down the street and just start smiling because it's like, wow, what's this? Eyes open. Just That's what I want to see. The transition that you've taken from the doodle and from a canvas to a large-scale wall like the one that we are sitting in front of, that seems pretty <laughs> tremendous. What's the difference for you between working within each of those spaces? Um, well, I have what's referred to as a benign familiar tremor. So basically, I always shake. So when people meet me, they're, they're like, are you nervous? Are you shaking? And for me, um, 
doing canvas work or doing paperwork sometimes proves a little more difficult because it's it's a lot smaller and sometimes I'll have to use two hands in order to keep myself steady. Um, that working on the street in aerosol has allowed me more freedom to kind of go back and fix mistakes if I get too sloppy or um, basically put things together. And if there was an overall takeaway message of your work, what would it be? I'm, I'm trying to elicit joy. I'm trying to elicit happiness. I'm trying to put smiles on faces. Um, but ultimately, I'm, I'm doing it for myself. You know, I, I, I don't want to be selfish by saying that, but like, when I get the opportunity to do, to do it, it's like, it's the best therapy in the world.